Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about event triggers and data triggers, how to utilize those to automatically change functionality on your remote. That all happens dynamically behind the scenes based on either the actions performed on the remote physically or actions that are happening behind the scenes to variables. So today we'll be looking at the muting functionality of my audio receiver and we'll be implementing it using a toggle switch on the designer. But before we get started, we need to understand what's going on behind the scenes of that variable. We didn't create this variable ourselves. Instead, it was created automatically by the designer when we added the receiver during a previous video. We're most interested, in my case, in the TXNR636 Zone 1 dot mute capability. So we need to understand what's going on there behind the scenes. What are the available values for that particular capability? It could be a variety of things. It could be true false. It could be on off. It could be muted unmute. Um, so, and those could all be case sensitive as well. There's a couple of ways you can figure it out. The first thing is to reference on the forum post, bring up the home remote forums. And I'm most interested here on the device objects post. And I'll scroll down a bit so you can see that audio mute is listed here. Its value is mute and its enumerated options are either muted or unmuted. So that means we're ruling out on off as well as true false. This is good information to have. But just to double check, let's look at the designer in a way that we can see what's going on behind the scenes of that particular variable just to confirm that's the case with our receiver. To start, I'm going to create a control label. I'm just going to draw it down here at the bottom. And these little labels are great to keep track of troubleshooting stuff. Uh, you can always delete them later, but sometimes I just move them over to another screen that's hidden from the end user. So what I want to do here, similar to the last video, is I want to bind the text value of that label to our dot mute capability. So here it is, txnr636 zone one dot mute. So whatever is in that variable, I want to display on this label. Let's take a look at that now using the simulator. So our current status here is unmuted, and that lines up pretty well. We can just double check the other one. I'm gonna use the physical remote control here to turn muting on. I think I'm gonna to have to get up to do it. Okay, so there it is on and back off. And we're also gonna just first check the functionality of what our toggle switch looks like just so we've got an idea of what that looks like. That's on and that looks like off, okay. We're gonna go ahead and stop the simulator now. Okay, so we're gonna start with the toggle switch and let's look at the triggers. It's already done some of the legwork here for us when we first created this trigger. I didn't create any of this uh, information here. It's got two event triggers and two data triggers. Let's look at the event triggers first since we're already pretty familiar with those from a previous video. An event trigger is something that happens when something is physically interacted with on screen. So if you click a button or you move a slider, things like that, those are actions which can be captured and then acted upon in some way. Now it's important to note that it's always what the new state of that control is going to be. So in the first case, we're going from the unchecked to checked event. So effectively we're going from off to on. And what do we want to do when that happens? Well, we're going to add an action here with the ellipses. It already has a data action waiting for us, an empty one, which is exactly what we need in this case. We're going to change the binding. We're going to put that same device binding in, the dot mute. And what do we want to change it to? Remember, we're going from off to on. And based on our capabilities, we know that's going from unmuted to muted. Tab to confirm. Now let's do the opposite side of things, the other event trigger. In this case, we're going from checked on to unchecked off. So what do we want to set the value to? Well, we want to set that same dot mute equal to unmuted. Okay. And we're ready to test this in the simulator now. Now it's important to test often because you can catch things like what I'm going to demonstrate here, unintended consequences with your controls. So currently our status is unmuted and I'm going to check the toggle switch which changes it from the off on or unchecked to checked value. 
And you can see that the receiver responds by physically changing it. It is actually muted back there now. No volume would be coming out if it was on. And then do the opposite here. I just go from the checked to the unchecked position. And then it fires off the unmuted command and changes that variable value back to unmuted. So this looks pretty good and you might think you're done at this point, but let me give you a scenario that's, that's gonna cause us some problems. If you notice when we first started up the simulator, the toggle switch always defaults to the off position. So what happens if we start up the uh, application and the receiver is in the muted position and the toggle switch is going to the default position? I'm gonna stop and start the simulator again to show you how this works. This time we started in the unmuted position and the toggle switch is good on, off, acts as we expect. But now I'm gonna leave it on, muted, Let's say I turned off the system in this state, and the next time I go to turn it on, uh-oh, now we have a problem. So the value of the, the receiver is currently in the muted state, which means no audio is coming out, and our toggle switch is in the wrong location. It's backwards. So if we were using IR commands for this uh, toggle switch, we would it would be very difficult to ever get this back into sync. We'd have to kind of play around with it, turn on and off the remote, uh, or maybe use the physical remote to kind of get it back into line up. Um, now, because we are using uh, Ethernet commands where we're sending a discrete command, if we were using a mute toggle, it would never get back into sync. But since we're using a discrete muted command when we turn it on, uh, what we're doing now is we're just sending a muted command. Well, it was already in muted status, so nothing actually changed. And then we're kind of synced back up automatically here. But let's change things so that this is never a possibility because we want things to be rock solid for our customers. I'm going to stop the simulator here. And now we're going to talk about data triggers. Now, remember, an event trigger is something that fires when a physical action is exerted upon a control. A data trigger, however, fires when a variable value is changed behind the scenes. And that could be a variable that we created ourselves, or in this case, one that's been created for us. So let me just walk you through a data trigger. The first thing we need to do is bind what variable the data trigger is looking at. And in this case, we're always just gonna be pointing right back to that muted control. So basically what we're saying is if that mute variable changes, and if the value now equals, in this case, we're gonna say muted, okay? So its new value has been changed to muted. Then we want to set in this case, we want to change this toggle switch. Uh, so we're going to use a setter item, which modifies a property of this, um, this control. And the property here is already set up with what we want, which is is checked true. Let me just run through that one more time. So the data trigger looking at the dot mute, if the value becomes muted, what do I want to fire? I want to fire this is checked property. Now, similar before, we're gonna also need to do the opposite. Another data trigger, this time still looking at the muted, or the uh, mute control. And then this time, if, I, if that value happens to equal unmuted, what do I wanna do? Well, I want to set this time the property is checked to false. All right, so one more time on that one. If the dot mute variable equals unmuted, I want the action to be setting this property value is checked to false, which is going to physically make this switch look like it's off. We're gonna test this now utilizing the simulator. We started up good here. We're in the unmuted status. Turning it on turns it to muted. Turning it off does what we expect. Now let's get it into that error state before. Let's say I had the system muted, I powered it off, and then this time I'm gonna turn it back on. And now you can see that automatically this control, because this variable is set to muted, we've fired this device trigger to set it to on. And now it's impossible for this to get out of sync. It's an important concept to master because not all devices have discrete values like this. Uh, a lot of things are controlled by power toggle, and if that's the case, you're going to have to create your own variables to keep track 
of the status of those devices. Or maybe you need to keep track of the status of a, an input uh, for a TV. For example, on my TV, there's no way to discreetly call out a source input. Instead, I must toggle through them individually, like starting from one to five. And then, uh, so I need to know if I'm currently on source three and I wanna to get to source five, then I only need to do two hops or two input changes. But if I'm on source one and I wanna to get to five, then I need to do four. And I can only do things like that by keeping track of variables and firing off data triggers based on those variable amounts. And one last piece of information that I want to convey is that the is checked property that we were uh, setting true or false utilizing data triggers, what that is, is it's actually this thing under properties, common, and is checked. So what we're actually controlling is this checkbox here uh, dynamically behind the scenes. We're either deciding of it's either unchecked or checked. And you can see what that looks like as a difference here on the designer whenever I toggle between those two. So uh, not all controls have an is checked uh, property to modify. So that's important to understand uh, that the things over here in the properties window, those are the setters that I'm able to access from within this control. So I know there was a lot going on in this video and I hope you were able to follow along. It may take a couple of rewatches to get all of the um, information that's kind of packed into this one event triggers, data triggers, working var with variables that we didn't create, reading what those current variables are, and just the inherent application of toggle switches. So uh, one last uh, little bit of information, you can set the default of the toggle switch to on from the very, very beginning. Um, but again, that's not really necessary in this particular instance because we have data triggers uh, since there's only two options for the mute status to be in, either muted or unmuted, uh, we only need two data triggers to keep track of those and put the switch in the correct position. So even if the default is on and I start it and I turn it off, um, it's just always going to be uh, automatically put in the right position. Again, there's no way for this to get messed up. So I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next one.